Hello, once again, we're coming to you live from Whosoever Will Outreach Ministry, 2121 Tillman Highway, located right here in Ridgeland, South Carolina, under the leadership of Dr. Bostick, along with Pastor Bostick and the ministry crew. We have been talking about something very powerful in the last few meetings. Once again, my name is Prophet Scotty Lee Johnson of Seed Time and Harvest Ministry. 365 East Cherry Street, located in the beautiful city of Jessup, Georgia. And the one thing that we've been talking about for all the people that are watching and the people that are listening and the people that are viewing is that we've been talking about living strong in this day and time which, in which the Lord has set up for us. And in this last day and time, it's very important for each and every one of you to understand that you have a divine purpose. And that purpose is based upon a call in which God has already predestined in each and every one of our lives to not only to deliver but to also set forth his course in our lives as individuals. And so therefore we've been talking about several things based upon the ability that God has given us to live strong even in this day and time. And on tonight I'm going to be coming out of the book of Luke. For each and every one of you that are watching, I want to say unto you once again, you cannot give up on 2013 because everything that was missed, everything that was lost, everything that was left behind, all of the things that tried to destroy or control or dictate your identity, Father is saying unto you tonight that once again he is speaking a more sure word of prophecy. And we know that even now, that whenever the Lord speaks, his word is true and it is also steadfast. So now in the book of Luke, chapter number 10, we're going to be looking at something very, very familiar, especially when it deals with living strong in this day and time and the power that God has given us. We've also got to understand that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible declares, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now, in the book of Luke, chapter number 10, verse number 17, the Bible declares, and the 70 return again with joy. These are the ones that went out in proclamation of the name of Jesus to, to speak on the behalf of the Lord. And God had also given unto them that power in which they needed. So in this end time, in these last days, you must be aware and you must be sure that you have that power, but not only have it, but also with joy. So we're looking at where the 70 return. Watch this, saying, Lord, even the devils. So even the devils, that means that not only the devils, but something else is subject unto them. This also meant that they are receiving a constant victory or subject unto us through thy name. And that is the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in which we know died for each and every one of us. So now we see that the 70 return. What did they say? They say, we went out, checked some things out, into the land, ran into some trouble. But guess what? We was working under the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus. So there's one thing that we're realizing is that in this day and time, you must realize that there is still power in the name of Jesus. So now we see that everything is subject unto this name. So now we're looking a little bit further. The Bible declares in verse number 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Jesus is saying, look, in other words, marvel not, I checked out Satan when I beheld him even as lightning falling from heaven. That meant that he fell so fast until lightning couldn't even keep up with him. So if God has given you a victory, that means that victory is imminent and it is also impacted. So what is happening right now is that the Lord is allowing each and every one of you that are watching to find your purpose 
and to know your purpose. And once you, once you know your purpose, once you find your purpose, then he's able to give unto you this power and you will see everything that came up against you for the last 12 years begin to fall by the wayside like you ain't never seen it fall before. Because God is releasing in this day and time what I call catch-up power. This means that everything that was left behind, you have now got time to catch up with it. So the Lord is saying everything that came to bind you and your family, came to bind your destiny, came to hinder and to stop your progress in this life, he is saying now he is releasing unto you a new agility, a new ability, and the progress that's getting ready to take place is unstoppable and is uncompared to what he is doing in this day and time. So we also see that even the Bible declares, and he said unto them, which means there's more than one. They're gathering around, they're sure of them. And he said, look, don't worry about that marvel not. Behold, I beheld Satan as light and falling from heaven. And then he says, behold, I give, which means now I release unto you something. And that something is not just any kind of anything. He said, behold, I give unto you power. Now, this is not just any kind of power. This is delegated authority. This is dunamis power. This is exousia power. We understand that. But this is power to tread upon. That means that everything that you was facing, the Father is saying that I'm re releasing a new element into your life to make sure that everything that came up against you, now you got power to walk over. And in the midst of that, this is the beginning of a new beginning. Because now we see that Jesus is saying, look, open up your eyes, realize, behold, I beheld. I've already checked out the fallen sources that have come up against you and I. So what is God saying for you? He's saying to you and I, in 2013, he is releasing a whole new strategy into your life which recognizes the fact that the power source that you had before, it cannot fail now. And so he's releasing this based upon the return of who he is. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And then he goes on to declare, And over all the power of the enemy and nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. So what is God doing? In the year of 2013, Father is turning the events in your life. He's making sure that everything that you set out to accomplish, you will be able to accomplish. This is not an I might deal. This is an I shall deal. And the Lord is saying not only shall you, but you can. For the Bible declares that you can do all things through Christ, which strengthened you. So what is he doing? He's turning the tables in your life. He's making sure that the missing link that's been in your life for so long is finally being put together. We understand that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And I hear that said often. And then I think to myself, well, in order for me to have a strong change, I got to make sure that every link in the chain is fat. That means that there is no weak link there. So that means that you're only as strong as the next thing that's sitting next to you that helps you to connect yourself to his strength. So what is God saying? He's saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I feel as though something now is turning around in this day and time and God is releasing things that's coming against every bit of fear factor that you and I have ever experienced. So now that this fear factor is being wiped out, he's also releasing unto us of an assurity. And this assurity declares, Behold, I give unto you power. And that power is to tread upon Serpents and scorpions. Now, 
the battle declares, and over all the power of the enemy, and that nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is what I like. This is very important. <laughs> and the reason why this is so important is because he goes on to say right after that, it's good that you're rejoicing because I've given you this power. Living strong says, recognize who you are in God from the day that you was born. You was given a birthright by God, and this birthright says that you and I have been bought with a price. This price can't nobody pay. This price could nobody die for, and it came through that precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now this same price that he paid for you and I, he also established with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then he declared something, even unto that down line. And he said, look unto Joshua. Joshua, taking the baton of Moses. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And he goes on to say, look, wherever your feet shall tread, I will give you that land. We know that Jesus came down through 40 and two generations. And those 40 and two generations, he walked through the volume of the books. So when he came down through those volume of the books, from that stem of Jesse, that line or that lineage of David, he came for a reason for you and I, and that reason was to make us conquerors, but not only conquerors, but more than conquerors. So he goes on to say, in verse number 20, <clears throat> notwithstanding, in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you. Now this is very important. He first of all says, what I want you to do is rejoice. Not because the spirit are subject unto you. What spirit? This means it is any spirit that will come up against the will of God that is in your life. So what is God saying to you or not? He's saying that I'm breaking the bands of the stronghold to make sure that the enemy do not destroy the reputation or the destiny that I have called you to walk into. So whatever others did not achieve, you might as well get ready because 2013 is about to turn a new leaf in your life and what God is saying to you, this is no time to surrender. No time to throw in the towel. No time to wave the flag. Because this means that spirits in your home must come subject. Spirits on the job must come subject. Spirits in the school system must come subject. And each and every line in which God have set in your life have already been predetermined by there's a factor that says these power must come subject. Notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So what God is saying to each and every one of us is that we are to rejoice because our name is written down in heaven. Not only that, but he also lets us know that if our name is written down and he's given us this power and he tells us that this power is to tread upon all the power of the enemy. And he said, hey, you don't have to go around shouting because you just got the whip of the devil. He said, the thing that I want you to do is to shout because you've got a place that is in my kingdom. So living strong, you must understand that God also declares whosoever will, let them come. This means that there is no judgment based upon who you are 
before you can come unto Christ. Jesus began to praise God right there in the very next verse. And this is very important to living strong. If you can give God glory <clears throat> when it looks like you're in a defeated situation, you can come out of that battle with a victory. The Lord is saying that this is no more time for you and I to be tied up and to be locked down by circumstances in life. So what he's saying is that there is a return of every spirit that came out to defeat you. That spirit must come subject in this day and time. So in this day and time, we see that this is a now release. It is a must release. And it is evident that Father has plans to further your life. You cannot die before your time. You will not die before your time. Forget about it, regardless of how bad things look. Because Jesus, in the very next verse, begins to praise God. In verse number 21, in the book of Luke, chapter number 10, it declares, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in God. Spirit. Look at this. The moment they brought to God good news, the moment they came to Christ about good news, about his power and what he's done, and Jesus began to tell unto them, say unto them, look guys, chill out. Don't worry about that. The thing I want you to do is to understand that it's for you to rejoice because your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is very important. Because he did not wait till the next day to start praising God for what they said. He started praising God the same moment or the same hour that they said. That means that God had already begun to deliver them through their praises. So whenever you're going through something, the Lord is determined that you will make up for lost time because of your praise. So he began to rejoice. And even as he began to rejoice, he began to declare unto them that these things begin to happen within that same hour. I want to say unto each and every one of you that are watching, how many of you have been waiting on that same hour blessing? That means the moment God dropped it into your spirit to do something for him, and the moment you begin to do it for him, you begin to rejoice, and as you begin to rejoice, at the same time, God began to answer your prayer. That's called a self-same hour blessing. That's what I believe in God for this year. One of the self-same hour blessings that will be so big until all of heaven will have to rejoice. And that's what time it is. So what he's doing, he's making sure that he's bringing much closer into your life. And that closure is to say that you will not be dictated or determined by your past failures, but it will be based upon the benefit of the future of who you are. The Lord is already bringing collective items together. He's already doing the itemized deduction. He's already weighing the balances in the scale. He's already counted the cost. And precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. So the Lord is turning the tables to let you know that what shall separate you from my love. So he's letting you know that no trials, no tribulations, no circumstances, no, no becoming a victim in this hour will cause you to become separated from the love of God. This is the time that you're going to stand, that you're going to proclaim, and that God is saying that he is going to release because you are living in a now time. 
in that now time says that there's a declaration that says no more defeat. In the hour that he heard this, Jesus began to rejoice. The Lord is bringing a prophetic voice into your home, into your house, right there where you are, even in the restaurant, while you're viewing, while you're watching, while you're sitting at your table. And he's saying unto you that surely the Lord God will do nothing except that he reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And he's saying unto you that this word that's coming unto you now is coming to change your life. The Lord delivered the children of Israel by a prophet. We understand that even Nathan the prophet had to go to David and speak unto him concerning the future of Israel. Not only that, but we also found out that even Samuel was the one that God used time and time again to deliver Israel. And what does he say? That there is a word of prophecy, a more sure word, that is coming into your home, reaching your family, and letting you know that life will not be the same. This year, I declare and decree that there will be a change less than the next seven months, the seven weeks, the seven days Amen. that will begin to take place in your life. Amen. I hear the Lord say, Amen. this is called the one-week return. Amen. If it takes people to work one week to get paid, I believe God saying you at the end of your week, it's time for payday. Oh, amen. He worked six days and he rested for seven. And after that, he made man upon that six day he rested. That was payday. And I believe now that each and every person that is watching, God is saying, get ready. The best is yet to come. I noticed something. That whenever they dig for gold, on those gold rush, rush programs, they have to find something that's called pay dirt. Pay dirt means that they've hit a certain amount of hard rock. They call it payload. And they have to sift through all of that just to find the finest piece of gold. After dumping all the big rocks, after removing all of the soil, and getting down to the black dirt that sticks to it. And that's that fine black dirt that stays on that gold in which they have to have this riveting motion to come in to shake everything loose. And because the gold weighs a little bit more, that black dirt has to shake itself off of it. And then it sits there and it glitters and it shines because the fact that everything that held it down from the rocks to the waters, to the sediments, to the clay, to the pay dirt. It had to release what glittered even at the bottom of the sediment. So what does God say? Everything that tried to hold you down within the last few years of your life, the Lord said he's removing the heavy things, he's removing the sediments, he's removing the pay dirt, bringing you out of everything that was designed to keep you here and not to bring you out of this life and he's saying that this year is your year to shine. Amen. As I relax and as we get close to start to finish I want you to know that I believe that there is a return for each and every one of us this year. The Bible declares in verse number 21 Jesus said, Rejoice in the Spirit. And he said, I thank thee, O Lord. So right at that time, he began to give God glory. He said, O Lord of heaven, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things. <clears throat> oh boy, I think I'm about to get happy. Jesus began to rejoice and he said, Father, first of all, I want to thank you from hiding from everybody 
that think that they, they are so smart to know how to figure you out. He said, you've hidden it from the wise and the prudent. In other words, you got folks out there that cannot rejoice about casting out a devil because they're too busy worried about how big their bank account is. And God is saying, wait a minute, I've given you something bigger than, watch this, the control of just society forces. I've given you a supernatural force, and then Jesus began to rejoice and begin to thank God and begin to say, I thank you because you hear this from those that think that they're so smart and think they know everything. Whenever God sends you a word, that word is coming to outwit, to outdetermine, and to defeat every enemy that ever came up into your life. And God is saying, no matter how big it is, no matter how smart it is, no matter how wise it is, guess what? It cannot defeat the word that he is sending to you and your family to let you know that there is a determination this year that you will not be defeated for whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. And where there's a will, there is a way. And where there's a determination, there is a victory. Amen. So he's already declared that. He's shifting it and he's shaping it. So that you and I will not have to go back to the same old defeated situation. The Lord is saying, wait a minute. I'm giving you power because I'm going to prophesy you out of dead relationship, out of defeated jobs, out of school children that are failing. And it seems like you cannot get from point A to point B. The Lord is saying to tell you that he is the one that has given you that power to tread upon This is why he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So if you're tired of living a defeated life, I want you to remember whosoever will outreach ministry, living strong, tv.com, make sure that you make that contact. Log on, click on, and when you view this, you say to yourself, God, there's something about this. I need this. The Lord is letting you know that every devil that visits your house from this weekend to last weekend got to go. Amen. This is what he's doing. You're not going to wait for some television message just to get you blessed. No. You're going to act out of the message that's coming through the television. Amen. And that's what's going to get you blessed. Amen. Amen. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't have got blessed 24-7 by everybody else. Amen. Whosoever will. 2121 Tillman Highway located right here in Ridgeland, South Carolina. We continue. Verse number 21 as we start to finish. My time is almost up. I'm getting happy. Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. And God, watch what he declares. And has revealed them unto babes. Wow. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. The Lord said the reason why he told you and I certain things is because it was good to him. So God will tell you something. Oh, yeah. Boy, help me get through this one. The Lord will tell you something this year that will help you get through this year because it seems good to him. You know how it is when you eat something that tastes good, you like to be can powder that everybody else don't. And you say to yourself, well, go for me. Thank God. He gave you that extra taste bud to take one extra bite. And it was a good thing that everybody else ate everything else 
So you took half of the pie home with you. It's your year. Start to finish. Coming to a close. Last part. What's this? I love this. Verse number 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father. If Jesus is saying all things are delivered to him of his Father, well, guess what his job is? To distribute unto us. Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, God. That's why he said unto you, I give unto you power. He had to give it to you because he could keep it. Don't you think? All right. You got some people that will get some power and eat up all of it. They just take the power and, you know, just go and zip this one out, zip that one out. But not Jesus. So, it was delivered unto him. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And watch what he declared. And no man knoweth. Say, so nobody can dictate this. Who the Son is but the Father. The Father is the only one that really can tell you who I am. And who the Father is, and I'm the only one that can tell you who the Father is. So the only way to see the Father is through Jesus. And the only way to see through Jesus is through the Father. So either way, go with a trap. So when we look at the Son, we look at the Father. When we look at the Father, we look at the Son. And how do we do it? We do it through His Word. No, not the sun and the moon. You look at that tonight or tomorrow. But what is God saying? This is time for a change. And I believe that this change is inevitable and it will not stop until it takes place. God is hammering on your life and he's saying he's going to continue to hammer on it. He's going to continue to knock at it until he breaks through the door of your heart. Living strong, whosoever will. Coming to a close. And even as I come to a close, I want you to know that God has given us the benefit of the doubt. And through this benefit of the doubt, we know that all things work together for the good. Amen. Now look at what the Bible declares in the closing part. I'm excited because I feel the Lord telling me that somebody is watching that's really getting this. Somebody's watching that's really getting this, and I can hear your name coming through. I want you to continue to watch. Your name starts with an A. I want you to continue to watch. Because even as you continue to watch, the Lord is going to allow us to come to you prophetically so that you can call in. And even as you begin to voice your opinion and send in your prayer request, Father is going to answer your prayers here on tonight. And I hear that word again. A, sounds like an Alicia. Last part. But the Son, he is to whom the Son will reveal him. And so therefore, we understand that the Father is saying in this day and time, that he have revealed unto each and every one of us something that is special, something that is known, and something that is made by decree. And I've got to say unto you that this shifting that is taking place is far more important than what probably any of us realize. I believe that this is the year that we're going to catch up and not be left behind. Amen. Because everything that was determined to hurt us, yes. the Lord is saying, no more. Amen. Enough is enough. Amen. And so this is the hour 
that he's saying he will cry out and spare not. So in the midst of it all, there must be a determination. Why? Because God is unlocking the mystery. He's unfolding it. And he is saying to you, it's your time to live strong. I know that some of you, you're saying, Prophet Johnson, I can't wait. Got to get to some of those services. We want you to stay tuned for up and coming events that are getting ready to take place and for the ministry location in which God is moving. And we're looking at two churches in one church in two locations and we're beginning to feed off of that information. And what God is doing is he's just birthing the ministry of new. And for those of you who are wondering about the itinerary, we want you to be able to log in, get that information, stay in touch with us, and know that it's very important for you to live strong while you are struggling free with the cross. I would like to say that we... Once again, live streaming at 2121 Tillman Highway, located right here in the beautiful city of Richland, South Carolina. Hey, that's my time. Thank you for yours. And we're going to make sure that next time you catch up and you phase in and don't let anything stop you from being blessed by the Word of God. Remember, 2013, God is saying, you come and claim. That's my time. Thank you for yours. Bye now.